life has really returned to its normal routine. The children, of course, are back in school with all their schedules. And we are preparing for our spring and summer projects. Well, at least I am, because I already went out and bought my garden soil and all my mulch. So I'm ready for spring. We have gone through the dark days of Lent and Good Friday and experienced the heights of Easter joy. And now it is business as usual. That is exactly how the disciples felt as they gathered by the Sea of Tiberias. What now, they thought. What do all these events have to do with our daily lives? What are we supposed to do now? Peter couldn't answer the questions floating around inside his head. So he tells the group that he is going fishing. He knows how to fish. He knows what to do. The other events, well, he just doesn't know what to do about them. And so like us, he goes back to the same familiar routine that he had done before all of this had happened. He had given up three years of his life and now it is over, or so he thought. It's a universal reaction. When you don't know what you are supposed to do, then just keep doing what you have always been doing. Right? Right. right. Okay. <laughs> but even this familiar routine did not satisfy. These experienced fishermen could not catch a single fish until Jesus gave them a new direction. And what about Paul in our first lesson? He was doing what he thought was right. He did not lack commitment to God before the Damascus Road experience. No, in his eyes, he was protecting that commitment. And then, ha! Christ breaks into the life of Paul and the lives of the disciples. That is the common thread in these two stories. Here are two of the great men of the church, real people that we read and study, going about their daily lives until, surprise, they are met by the living Christ and their lives are transformed. They are being called in a new direction. Even after these men experienced the risen Christ, they had no idea how to implement this new relationship into their lives. At least not until they were given their marching orders from Christ himself. That is a good lesson for the church today. We think we know what God wants us to do. We think we have a plan, but are we sure? Perhaps before we do anything, we should pray. Pray for guidance, pray for wisdom, Pray to see if this is what God is calling us to do. I am sure, in fact, I am 100% sure, that is what this congregation did before we started the Lyft Project. How else can you explain the explosion of money and talent so that the project was completed in a little over a year? God had given us our marching orders and we obey. Praise God. We know, absolutely know, with every fiber of our beings that Christ is risen. We have been told and we sort of understand that we have a new relationship with the Father. But how does this translate into our daily lives? Where does all of this lead? And can I follow? And let's add one more question. Is it just in church or church related that this matters? Or does it have to do with our own daily lives? Those and a myriad of other questions are the questions that play us. As a Jew, I have followed 614 laws. And I knew, I really knew that there was no way I could ever succeed. If I broke one law, I broke them all. Each young Kipper, I heard the rabbi tell me that if I had been truly repentant, I would be put into the book of life. 
which meant I would be holy and I would be able to be in the presence of God. But was I truly repentant enough? Then, ha! Jesus entered my way. I knew, really, really knew for the first time that I was truly forgiven. But what next? I soon discovered that this complete forgiveness transformed me just like it transforms each one of you. We are being molded into the image of Christ himself. Did you hear me say that we are being molded? It is not a one-time event. Instead, it is a lifelong event. And what does Jesus ask of us? He asks that we willingly step into this new relationship with open hearts and minds. That we lift him up in our lives as he draws, as we draw, as he draws us closer to him. And the miracle of Easter is that each day of our lives, this is happening. Each moment, Jesus is there forgiving us, transforming us, and leading us into new paths. However, Sometimes we are too afraid to accept that forgiveness. And sometimes we are too afraid to travel the new road that lies before us. <clears throat> Don't you think that Peter and Paul felt the same way? They had to give up everything that was familiar to them and go in a completely new direction. But the promise is is that there is nothing, no sin, no matter how great we feel it is, that can ever separate us from Christ's love and grace. And there is no road, no matter how different it is, that we will ever travel alone. God himself has reached out his arms to us. He has come so that we might be transformed into the people he knows we can be. He is alive. As I tell my catechism students, we do not worship a dead God. We worship a living God who intrudes into our lives to encourage and direct us into an abundant, grace-filled life. From a stable in Bethlehem to a hill called Calvary to an open and empty tomb, God has shattered the world of darkness so that the world of light might enter and dwell with him. Just like Jesus did with Peter and Paul, he will patiently continue to teach us even when we do not listen. That is his promise. He will patiently lay out the road for us and encourage us to follow. Jesus will draw us with cords of love stronger than our sinful habits, stronger than our deaf ears, stronger than our blind eyes or our stony hearts. He will draw us with gentleness until we are ready to entrust our lives to his care. This is an ongoing process. God never gives up on us. I read this quote many years ago, and it gives me so much hope. Jesus will never toss us onto the cosmic junkie of the universe. And it is because of that promise that we are encouraged <coughs> to try new ways of looking at worship and Bible study and ministry. It is the Lord of the universe that is walking with as we tread these new paths, as we come to new understandings. In this time after Easter, we contemporary disciples may be tempted to walk past Easter, to get back to business as usual, to do whatever we were doing before we were encountered by Jesus. Let these two vivid stories, full of such realistic details, be a catalyst for us to be strengthened in the faith 
and to be encouraged in the following.